Great plains, vast jungles, endless dune seas. The world of Azeroth is packed with distinct landscapes that transport you into the game of classic WoW. No two places are quite the same, and players can spend weeks, months, or even years discovering them all. Today though, I want to examine a few spots on the map that fall to the wayside when compared to some of the more grandiose locations. Areas on the fringes of the world, rarely visited by players. These dead ends of Azeroth don't play a central role in quests or travel, but they still hold their own mysteries and atmosphere, whether it's rainy tranquility, windswept loneliness, or something more sinister. As always, thank you all for your fun comments and support, and with all that being said, let's get right into it. The dreary land of Darkshore holds one of the longest stretches of coastline in the entire game. There are many night elven ruins scattered about under the trees and cloudy sky, but the most reclusive of these are the ruins of Mephistra. Past the ominous Tower of Althalax, the wilderness opens up a bit to reveal scattered pillars, arches, and adventurous naga. While there is a single quest that briefly brings you up here, there are many more details here than meet the eye. For one, hunters may be familiar with the white cat figurines that dot the ruins. There's a rare chance of these items calling forth a ghost saber that can be tamed as a one-of-a-kind pet. This is a really cool piece of history that references the Kaldori Empire and the Night Elf's bond with saber cats going back thousands of years. Perhaps Mephistra was well known for its fanged companions, lost during the Great Sundering, along with countless elves. There are more secrets to discover here. Within the heart of Mephistra is a mysterious temple-like structure surrounding a pool of water. Players may recognize this as a near duplicate of one found in the Zoram Strand to the south, the entrance to Black Fathom Deeps. This is no mere coincidence. Before Beta Patch 0.12, Black Fathom Deeps was originally supposed to be up here, in Darkshore, and the earliest concept maps of WoW confirm this placement. With the dungeon, now a raid in Season of Discovery, being moved away, this part of the map is now much more lonely than it could have been. Past the ruins, some very faint trails lead to a small circle of broken pillars, right on the northern tip of Darkshore. Apart from the creatures of the forest, there's nothing else here, but its close proximity to the hidden troll village and the infamous Road to Nowhere, which I covered in a separate video, means this tranquil dead end could have once been meant for something more. I love this out of the way area, and I think it can be really peaceful, especially when it's raining. On the other side of the world, another dead end can be found deep within the Blasted Lands. This charred desert was formed from the Black Morass by the Dark Portal, its energies twisting and wasting the landscape. In the farthest reaches of this zone, the Tainted Scar is the purest embodiment of this evil energy, a grey valley filled with demons. Lord Kazakh can be fought here during Classic WoW, but besides him, Dio the Decrepit is the only other noteworthy NPC, an aged warlock standing before an altar. Warlock players visit here to learn Ritual of Doom, but there really isn't much else around. Turning up your volume and just taking in the atmosphere will probably cause you to choke on the demon smog, but you really get into the experience of one of the most evil areas in the game. It feels like you're far from home, in a place you probably shouldn't be. The fact that this area ends, or should we say dead ends, at a chained statue with flickering blue flames is a creepy finale, a perfect fit for this zone. The broken shores of Ajara are, by design, one of the most isolated regions in the game. Once near the heart of highborn civilization, the Sundering ripped apart the world and sank many coastal cities. Ajara contains many such ruins, but one in particular is important today. The Tower of Eldara, along the northeastern coast of the zone, stands alone against the waves. There are no quests that lead here, making it one of only a few locations in the game that is very distinct despite not having a purpose per se. However, this ancient tower is noteworthy in another way. This is the easternmost point in all of Kalimdor, 
making it, theoretically, the closest point to the Eastern Kingdoms on land you can visit in-game. I've visited this spot many times, and the views of the majestic pink beaches never quite get old. Let us now return to a domain of demons and darkness. High above the coastal reaches of Ajara, the mountains of Winter Spring envelop the upper slopes of northern Kalimdor. While most of this zone is rather peaceful and covered in snow year-round, the southern area is altogether less so. A series of cramped caverns and crevasses make up Dark Whisper Gorge, a high-level area where Hedorine demons have charred the land and turned the air to ash. Judging from their proximity to Mount Hyjal, it's likely these demons are the remnants of the once great army that stormed the mountain during the Third War, driven now to the darkened corners of the world. While level 60 players do come here from time to time, it's pretty desolate, and like the Tainted Scar, it's really at the end of the road. Well, kinda. There's one little detail that makes the Dark Whisper Gorge well known to many classic WoW fans, and that is the Hyjal Gate. In the back of the gorge, an intricate door with an instance portal blocks off one final cave leading into Mount Hyjal itself. That hasn't stopped explorers from breaking in and seeing the sights for themselves, but officially, there's no path into the zone, and the Dark Whisper Gorge remains as one of the most infamous dead ends in the game's history. I wanted to end this video on a sunny note, and the Land's End Beach allows us to do just that. Far in the south of Tenaris, the pointed beachhead of Land's End points off into the South Seas. Treasure seekers can find Quergo's treasure hidden here within the sand, but there's little more to discover here. Surf gliders tread along the shore, and looking off into the distance, all you can see is a tiny landmass. In reality, two islands, reserved for only the most dedicated of explorers, or perhaps, wannabe scarab lords. Without the assistance of Meredith the Mermaiden, or some fancy spell work, it is very difficult to reach these islands. And hey, Land's End Beach is called that for a reason. This might be the most picturesque area of the entire zone, and with how far it is from Gadget Zan, perhaps the one with the least number of players as well. If you're looking for somewhere to suntan and wow, this would definitely be the spot. And so, there you have it. Five dead ends in classic WoW, some pretty, some perilous, but all still contributing to the amazing, detailed World of Warcraft. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, let me know down below. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, may the Force be with you.